So yesterday, Representative Jim Jordan sat down with Jake Tapper to discuss the impeachment thing and to discuss possible corruption in the Biden-Ukraine situation. And I think it's important to go through this video because a lot of people on the left are saying this was Jim Jordan being crushed by Jake Tapper. You can see CNN themselves, they list this video as Jake Tapper fact checks Representative Jim Jordan on Ukraine scandal. And I think that Jake Tapper represents someone who's, he's not just a buffoon or an airhead, he's well respected amongst the left. And I can say I think he's a smart guy and he's competent. I just think that he's corrupt and he's so partisan that he's spreading innuendo and rumor instead of actually looking at facts and then claiming those are facts. So I want to go through this video and talk specifically about why I think Jake Tapper's wrong here. I think Jim Jordan does an okay job, but he could have done much better. By the way, if you're listening, Trump team or Republicans, this video is an example of why you should have me out there. It's just to toot my own little horn a little because I could have absolutely devastated Tapper in this interview as I'll represent. Now, just to let everyone know, we're starting six minutes in because I'm kind of long-winded anyways, and so I don't want this video to be two hours long. So, But I can tell you, I'll attach the video. You can watch it yourself and see the first section of it. In the first section, they talk about things like, here's some of the hype points. Jake Tapper doesn't ever bother to respond to the fact that Jim Jordan says, hey, if this was about actually trying to get to the bottom of corruption, the Democrats, including Pelosi, wouldn't have suggested impeachment before they read the transcript. Jake Tapper doesn't respond. They discuss the idea that possibly this whistleblower is biased. Jake Tapper says, well, that basically that, that doesn't matter. It could mean anything. Uh, they discuss the fact that the law was changed, that normally secondhand gossip like this would not fall under whistleblower protection. Tapper says there's no proof of that. That's absolutely untrue. You've seen in my previous live stream, I showed the exact legislation or the exact rules for whistleblowers. In July of this year, it literally said that, hey, if this is secondhand gossip and not firsthand, stop right here. This isn't a whistleblower case. Now it says that you can't have that secondhand gossip. So there was all sorts of things that went into this, but this is the real crux of the issue. And that is when they're discussing the allegations of what Hunter Biden did and the potential of Joe Biden covering up some corruption. So I'm going to be presenting actual evidence from actual sources with this. And I know that I'm known to be verbose and have these long expositions where I'm talking about things. So I'm going to try to limit that, but a warning, it will happen. So I'm going to leave it play and then stop when I think we get to relevant parts to talk about this. But I think that I'll be able to thoroughly debunked Tapper's claims here. Up Biden. And my guess is, if you ask the American people, when they look at what happened with Joe Biden's son, what I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that. What happened with Joe Biden's son? He got paid $50,000, Jake. $50,000 yeah. a month for several years now. And the Ukrainian prosecutor of, said there's no evidence of wrongdoing. Come on. Okay, so first off, there's a lot to say about this. Uh, the first thing to say is the Ukrainian prosecutor he's referencing is a man by the name of Litsenko. Litsenko is who took over after Shokin was fired. So there's going to be a lot of names here. Shokin's this Ukrainian prosecutor who's tasked with looking into Hunter Biden's son's company, Burisma. Hunter Biden's on the board of directors of it. This company, Burisma, is owned by this oligarch that everybody says is corrupt. His name is Zolchevsky. We're led to believe that all these people in the West, including the Obama administration and Joe Biden, said, this guy's so corrupt, we're upset that Ukrainian prosecutors aren't looking into him strong enough. Now, we know that the facts are going to belie that that's their reasoning for wanting this guy fired because we know the end of the story. Spoiler alert. It gets kicked off to a new office after this prosecutor was fired and they then bury the case. So that's kind of the end of the story. So we know if it's true that all the West was upset about this guy not being properly investigated, well, they certainly haven't had a problem once this prosecutor was fired because that's exactly what happened. The investigation got buried. But secondly, Lusenko himself didn't say exactly what Tapper's saying here. He kind of given what seems to be contradictory statements, but I don't think they really are. And here's what he said. Yes, it's kind of true that he said he hasn't seen any evidence of Hunter Biden's guilt, which is true. And I haven't seen absolute proof of Hunter Biden's guilt either, which I'll get to in a second why that's important. But Lutsenko has also simultaneously said that he knows for a fact that these payments that went to Hunter Biden that were unearthed in a separate court case in the United States looking at Hunter Biden's partner showed that Hunter Biden was receiving up to $50,000 a month from this company. And Lutsenko said that should be investigated. So you could spin this either way, right? You, If you're for Trump, you could say, oh, this guy says these payments weren't investigated. If you're against Trump, you could take Tapper's position and said, yes, but he said that there was no evidence of corruption. He didn't see that Hunter Biden was corrupt. Well, but he admits he wasn't allowed to look at the evidence. So, like any good prosecutor, he's not going to say, yes, I think Hunter Biden's guilty if he hasn't seen the evidence. He's just saying, I know this evidence is out there. I wasn't allowed, and no one's properly looked at this. 
Now, the important thing to remember, as a previous video I showed did, was I don't have to prove that Hunter Biden or Joe Biden are guilty. Neither does Trump, neither does anyone else, neither the prosecutors in Ukraine. All we need to prove is that there is reasonable evidence for an investigation. And I think that that is certainly the case. If we prove that, that proves the impeachment case to Trump is total garbage. Because it's just a matter of Trump asking for a serious crime that is alleged to have possibly been committed by the previous administration be investigated. Now, we know for a fact that the Obama administration did the same thing when it came to investigating crimes of Trump. His FBI and his intel communities before and after the election heavily investigated Trump. The media and people like Jake Tapper told us as that investigation went on for three years that it was crucially important because we had to make sure there was no foreign interference into our elections and that Donald Trump wasn't cooperating with that interference. That's what they told us. So Trump asking the Ukrainian president, hey, we're looking back to the 2016 election and foreign interference. Can you do investigations to places like CrowdStrike and other corruption that was supposedly occurring in the Ukraine to interfere in the election? And that president says yes. And he says, by the way, uh, the situation into Biden. One, that's talking about a billion U.S. tax dollars being used for extortion for personal gain. That's not just something that we can say, oh, that's only Trump's only interested for uh, reasons of helping him win in 2020. That's absurd. They give Joe Biden the benefit of the doubt and say, oh, this wasn't just for personal reasons. He had other good reasons to do it. You can make the same claim of Trump. Trump, maybe aside from just wanting to win in 2020, maybe he actually is concerned about the U.S. government using a billion dollars for extortion for officials' personal gain. And secondly, this is directly referencing interference into the 2016 election. There's multiple ways to have interference. One way could be what they accuse Trump of doing, which is trying to work with a foreign adversary or foreign agency to get dirt on your opponent and use that dirt. Something which we have proof through the Mueller report that Trump never did, or people connected to Trump, and something which, as I'll present evidence later, that shows that we have actual admissions from the Ukrainian government that they actually did seek to interfere and did interfere in the 2016 election with the Democrats to help Hillary Clinton. That's unlike the Mueller case that proved the Russia claims were bogus. We actually have proof that that happened with the Ukraine, right? But aside from that, you can also interfere in the election and you can also do something to benefit your electoral chances, not by getting dirt in your opponent, but by burying dirt into yourself. Now, granted, Joe Biden wasn't running for president in 2016, but he certainly wanted his former partner, someone who was formerly of his administration, Hillary Clinton, to win. They certainly despise Trump. She's still in his party, the Democrats. She still was in his administration. And certainly if right before the election, months before, it came out that the Ukraine was interrogating Joe Biden's son for possible corruption and receiving tons of money, at the exact same time that his father and the Obama administration was actively working with the Ukrainians to end corruption, that would look very bad for all of the Democrats and for Hillary Clinton, who was part of that administration. Remember, the media was out there, 95% of the media was pro-Hillary. They were out there touting the Obama administration as scandal-free. So this would have been an enormous scandal about the Democrats breaking right before the election. Therefore, if it's true that Joe Biden used a billion of your tax dollars to silence that investigation, that is tantamount to election interference. So Trump should have every right to investigate it, just like Obama, we know, investigated through Crossfire Hurricane all of the allegations of Trump accepting election interference. Moving on. Well, wow. the, the vice president's son gets paid fifty thousand dollars a month and gets hired by a company in, if a, you in, have a, in a, an industry he has no experience in. And oh, that's fine. And all you folks in the press and Democrats, oh, no problem here. Go to, go to, try telling that, taking that message to the American people. If you want to propose a law, if you don't make fifty thousand in a year, and when they see the vice president's son getting paid fifty thousand a month in a field in an industry he has no experience in, I, I kind of want wonder what wonder what Hunter Biden did in those board meetings. So would he just look at his phone, check out the sports? In board? May, the he Ukrainian, has no, but he's May getting paid fifty thousand, and then when the company that's paying him that money mm -hmm. is under investigation, guess what? Daddy comes running to the rescue. The vice president of the United States that's comes running That's not what says, happened. Fire, sir, fire that prosecutor. Sir, that's not what happened. The European Union, the Obama administration, well, the International Monetary Fund, pro uh, uh, clean government activists in Ukraine thought that the prosecutor so you're saying, was not prosecuting corruption. So you're saying Joe Biden didn't tell them? Okay. 
Now, this is what's going to be important. This is what I've been arguing about for two weeks now, that the defense of Biden is his following. Well, a bunch of other people said that this prosecutor was corrupt, so he had every right to extort a billion dollars to get him fired. And the fact that that guy happened to be looking at his son was irrelevant. That's not true as I've gone through the case over and over, but just to go through it real quick. First, it could both things could simultaneously be true at the same time, that everyone could have wanted this guy fired, and he could have legitimately been corrupt. But that doesn't mean that Joe Biden didn't personally do it, or the Obama administration didn't per do it for personal reasons as well. For example, we know in the situation of Trump firing James Comey, the Democrats hated Comey because of what he supposedly did to Hillary before the election. Republicans hated Comey. Rod Rosenstein wrote a letter endorsing why Comey should be fired, everyone wanted this guy out. And so when Trump eventually fires Comey, people like Jake Tapper and the Democrats and the media went nuts and said, oh, well, it doesn't matter that everyone said he's guilty. Clearly Trump must have fired him for personal reasons. We need an investigation. This is despite the fact Comey was acknowledging. I never said I was investigating Trump. He was never the target of our investigation. But still they demanded what became the Mueller investigation, a two-year investigation into Trump. So why is the standard different with Biden? With Biden, it's, oh, it's okay, as long as there was any other reason, it doesn't matter if this personally benefited Biden. That's ridiculous. The second thing is, they want to take all the people that he's listing there, if you go back and you look at my video yesterday, and it's about the fact that Adam Schiff actually sent a staffer over to the Ukraine at the exact same time in late August that he's tweeting the allegations that are in the whistleblower report, and I had problems with that. Part of that video if you watch, and it's only 10 minutes, I recommend checking it out, is who paid for that trip? It was the Atlantic Council. The Atlantic Council is also the group that the media has been citing for two weeks, including people like CNN and Jake Tapper and all of them, because they always come out together, all these mainstream media, they come out and issue the same talking points at the same time together. That's how they do things. They've been citing how all the Western leaders wanted this prosecutor fired, and one of the groups they cite over and over again is the Atlantic Council. The Atlantic Council is a group that is on record disliking Trump. They're very anti-Russian. They're financed by George Soros' Open Foundation, oh, uh, George Soros' group, Open Society Foundation. One of the people on the board of the Atlantic Council is the CFO and founder of CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike being the group that was hired by the DNC to look at the server, that did not allow the FBI to look at the server, and that said Russians were responsible. CrowdStrike also a month later said Russians were responsible for a Ukrainian hack. It turns out they were wrong. The Ukraine government rebuked them and said that wasn't the case. So these are not independent people that Jake Tapper is citing. All of these groups, look, all of these groups are also globalists that were fans of Obama and hate Trump. Most of the European Union leaders. He cites the IMF. Check that video out again yesterday, the one I just referenced. I mentioned the IMF. The head of the IMF was a woman by the name of Christine Lagarde. You know where she was a couple years ago? At George Soros' wedding. The IMF's been accused of all sorts of corruption to help international globalist bankers. So the fact that you say, well, a bunch of people on my side that were all friends of Obama said this was okay, that's hardly relevant. That's just hearsay. By the same token, if Trump fires a prosecutor looking into his son, and I say, well, the president of India that's a big ally of Trump said that that was okay, and Boris Johnson in the UK and all of his groups said that it was okay, and Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and a bunch of think tanks that they're with, and a bunch of conservative think tanks all said that that was okay, that are fans of Trump. Do you think that would be acceptable for CNN and the Democrats, people like Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi? Of course not. They would say, of course a bunch of people that support Trump are going to say what Trump did was okay. Well, the same is true here. And the other thing is, again, we're going to have direct evidence from people who are more involved with the situation that actually Biden lied, that it had nothing to do with any corruption, that actually Shokin, the prosecutor he forced to be fired, was not corrupt. And so why am I supposed to ignore all this? Again, the standard shouldn't be that we have to prove that Joe Biden is guilty or that Hunter Biden is guilty. All we have to do is provide that there's sufficient evidence for an investigation. And if that comes out and you believe that as an American, which I think that threshold is clearly met, remember, look how sanctimonious people like Jake Tapper are here. That is not what happened. He has no proof. Have you heard any of these people say proof? They just verbatim say, everyone in the West wanted this guy out for being corrupt. Okay, where's the evidence he's corrupt? They don't cite that. They just say, oh, he was corrupt. 
So now to rebut these claims, right, that he's saying, oh, we just we take for granted this guy was corrupt. And remember, Western leaders have done this over and over again. Remember the Iraq war? We just had to accept the UK was on with it and the US and all the intelligence agency all said that we had to go in weapons of mass destruction. We had to do this. Remember? And then it was a lie. And then you remember groups like CNN and all these left-wing groups said, we're sorry we went along with that. We should have asked tougher questions. We promise it'll never happen again. Yet here they are again. They just repeat these leaders verbatim. They don't actually do their investigations. You remember how all the media likes to pat themselves on the back and say, we're important. We hold truth to power. We're the group that so the people could see what's really going on. We don't just take the powerful at their word. We investigate them. Here we are. Him telling Jim Jordan, I know for a fact you're wrong. There shouldn't be an investigation because I just believe what all these globalists say. That is ridiculous. That is not what a real journalist does. Now, let's go to specific statements of people involved. Remember, Jake Tapper had no problem citing a Ukrainian prosecutor. So here's the actual Ukrainian prosecutor that was fired. He is writing this in a sworn affidavit under penalty of perjury in September 4th of this year. So I'm going to read through it just a little so you can get a picture here. The circumstances of my dismissal were that I tendered my resignation at the Rada, which is the parliament in the Ukraine, at the request of President Poroshenko. Poroshenko asked me to resign due to pressure from the United States Presidential Administration, in particular from Joe Biden, who was U.S. Vice President. Biden was threatening to withhold a billion dollars in subsidy to the Ukraine until I was removed from office. After I yielded to the president's request and submitted my voluntary resignation, Poroshenko commented about it to the media. He said that I carried out a colossal amount of work as prosecutor, which is something none of my predecessors were able to do. It enabled the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of the Ukraine to conduct legal work, blah, blah, blah. The official reason put forward for my dismissal was that I had allegedly failed to secure the public's trust. Poroshenko and other state officials, including representatives of the U.S. Presidential Administration, had never previously had any complaints about my work, however. There were no grievances against me or any allegations that I had committed any corruption-related or any other crimes. Biden never stated anything of the kind either. Furthermore, all sanctions in respect of Yukonovich and his supporters remained in force and were not lifted by Occupy the Post. Moreover, these extensions were extended. And what he's saying here is, Yukonovich, you have to understand the situation in Ukraine. And it's very difficult because there's a lot of names and a lot of businesses, so it's hard to wrap your head around this. But here's a little of the background. You, let's talk about the three last Ukrainian presidents. You had Yukonovich, he was kind of a Russian sympathetic president. Then you had a coup that was backed by the United States and the Obama administration, and it ousted Yukonovich and put in this man, Poroshenko. Poroshenko was more anti-Russian and more was allied with the Obama administration. Poroshenko ultimately ends up losing to the current president, Zelensky. Zelensky was a stand-up comic. He was so tired of the corruption in the Ukrainian administration that he ran, and the people were tired enough that they put forth someone with no political experience who was a comedian to be the president. Sound familiar, right? Sounds a lot like the United States and Donald Trump. But that's the situation that's going what Shokin is saying here is, look, everyone accused Yukonovich, this pro-Russian president, of being criminal or having corrupt oligarchs all around him. If I'm so corrupt as a prosecutor, why did I extend the sanctions against all of those oligarchs? Which he's right. And he's also saying no one had a complaint until it, all of a sudden I started investigating Biden's son. Then all of a sudden these complaints arose of how corrupt I was. And he says previously here that I didn't read that he'd been involved since 1980 is working for the Ukraine government and investigating crimes. No complaints, no sanctions, no allegations of criminal conduct on his part until he investigates Joe Biden's son. Back to the quotes. The truth is I was forced out because I was leading a wide-ranging corruption probe into Burisma Holdings, a natural gas firm active in the Ukraine, and Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was a direct member of the board of directors. I assume Burisma, which was connected with gas extraction, had the support of U.S. Vice President Biden because his son was on the board of directors. On several occasions, President Poroshenko asked me to have a look at the criminal case against Burisma and consider the possibility of winding down the investigative actions in respect of this company, but I refused to close the investigation. Therefore, I was forced to leave office under direct and intense pressure from Joe Biden and the U.S. administration. In my conversation with Poroshenko at the time, he was emphatic that I should cease my investigations regarding Burisma. When I did not, he said that the U.S. via Biden were refusing to release a billion dollars promised to Ukraine. He said I had no choice, therefore, but to resign. And I'll attach this and you can read more of it. But this is the actual prosecutor that was fired. And a lot of what he's saying is backed up by other facts that we know. Like, we know that Biden bragged about this. We know that he did threaten to withhold a billion dollars. We know that Biden knew that this guy, Shokin, was the one, on paper at least, that was in charge of the investigation. 
Now, again, I've said this before. We don't know. Biden didn't know the specifics into the investigation into his son's company. How do we know that? Because if Biden did, then he was corrupt in that aspect. You're not allowed to get from prosecutors details of investigations into your family. That would be improperly using his foreign influence as well. So all Biden knew was he knew his son was being investigated. A New York Times article four months before Biden made his threat specifically asked the Biden camp, which responded their opinions on the fact that Biden's son's company was being investigated by this guy Shokin. So Biden knew the name of the guy who was in charge of the investigation, and he knew that there was an investigation into his son's company hired. That on its own right should be reason enough for an investigation. If Biden was honest, he would say, look, I understand. I'm t let's assume Biden's innocent. But if you could talk to him honestly, he would be forced to say, look, I'm innocent, but I understand how bad this looks on paper. So yes, there should be an investigation because I also would not trust if my opponent fired a prosecutor looking into his son. It doesn't matter what other people said. But no, we're told to actually look into that investigation's criminal. So that's one prosecutor. Jake Tapper's happy citing one prosecutor, but not this one. Wouldn't you at least say this is evidence worth looking into? Keep in mind, always put the shoe in the other foot test. If this was, if we're talking about Donald Trump here, and he fired a forced a prosecutor to be fired that was looking into his son, and that prosecutor came out in a sworn statement and said, I was told specifically I was being fired to bury the case into Trump's son, do you think that the media and the Democrats' take would be, eh, that guy was corrupt anyways, people said he was corrupt? Or do you think they'd be beating down his door for a statement? Do you think he'd be held up as a hero that was corruptly fired by Trump? You know the answer. Now, by what, what's going to be said by Tapper and defenders on the left is, well, Shokin's corrupt, so we don't have to listen to him. But it's not just Shokin. His account's backed up by other things. So, let's see what, this is from a John Solomon article, which a lot of this material is from him. He says, Shokin would certainly hold a grudge over his firing, but his account is supported by documents from Burisma's legal team in America, which appeared to be moving into the Ukraine with intensity as Biden's effort to fire Shokin picked up steam. Burisma's own accounting records show that it paid tens of thousands of dollars to, while Hunter Biden served on the board to an American lobbying public relations firm, Blue Star Strategies, ran by Sally Painter and Karen Tramontano, both who served under Bill Clinton's administration. Now let me just stop right here and say there's going to be a lot of names and a lot of businesses being thrown around here. The important thing to remember is this. There were agencies in the United States, a PR firm and a legal defense lawyer, that we're going to be discussing. That's all you need to know. The names aren't very important, right? But that's who we're going to be discussing. So when I say Tramontano or Painter or Blue Star, these are just all people that are working, being paid by Burisma. Burisma is this gas company that the corrupt oligarchs supposedly own that Hunter Biden's on the board of directors. So basically, these are lawyers looking out for Hunter Biden's company and Hunter Biden's own interests. In the days before Biden forced show conspiring, Painter met with the number two official at the Ukrainian embassy in Washington and asked to meet officials in Kiev around the same time that Joe Biden visited there. Ukrainian embassy employee Aksana Shulior emailed Painter afterward. With regard to the meetings in Kiev, I suggest you wait until next week when there's an expected vote on government's reshuffle. So in other words, she's dealing with these defense groups for Burisma and Hunter Biden are talking with Ukrainian embassy members saying, we would like to reach out to the prosecutors in Ukraine at the exact same time that Biden's forced this prosecutor to be fired. Painter then asked one of the Ukraine embassy workers to open the door for meeting the Ukraine prosecutors about the Burisma investigation, the memo show. Eventually, Blue Star, again, the firm, PR firm that's working with Burisma, would pay that Ukrainian official for money with his help with the prosecutor's office. Now, this disproves Jake Tapper and a lot of the media and the Democrats' first claim. That there, the investigation was done. It was already buried. If that's the case, why is Burisma, that company's defense lawyers, actively reaching out to the new prosecutor? In addition, we know that the case wasn't closed until January of 2017, which was after Biden had the prosecutor fired. So the investigation was never buried until... Biden had the prosecutor fired. Now, all of these Western groups that Jake Tapper cites, they were all for withholding a billion dollars until the corruption was ended and this guy Zolchevsky was finally investigated. Almost immediately after the prosecutor gets fired, the investigation in Zolchevsky is finally buried. Why weren't they speaking up? Isn't that odd? If they're really interested in ending the corruption, all of a sudden the investigation is buried now they don't have a problem with it. So it seems skeptical that their claim they wanted Shokin out just for not investigating corruption was the reason. Okay, 
We haven't even got to the good part here. At the time, Blue started working in concert with an American criminal defense lawyer, John Brenna, who was hired by Burisma to help address the case in Ukraine. The case was settled in January 2017 for a few million dollars in fines and alleged tax issues. So, Tapper is wrong. The investigation was not dormant. Burisma admits themselves via their own lawyers. The case wasn't fully closed until after this prosecutor was fired. Almost immediately after he was fired, in fact. Isn't that odd? If the allegation was, oh, there's so much dirt in this guy and there needs to be a full investigation. Finally, we got rid of the guy that was holding it up. Now they'll take care of it. And immediately they're like, yep, pay us a few dollars and you're done. But those are the people that Jake Tapper is saying, we have to take their word on everything. Now, they're saying this guy, uh... Oops, sorry. You have to excuse me for some reason. This, uh... Now, so we're to the point now where we know that they hired this guy, John Beretta, who's a defense attorney. On March 29, 2016, the day Shokin's firing was announced, Beretta, again, the defense attorney representing Hunter Biden's company and Hunter Biden's interests, Beretta asked to speak with Yuri Severuk, the prosecutor named to temporarily face Shokin, but was turned down. Blue Star... The PR firm that's working with that defense attorney, using the Ukrainian embassy worker it had hired, eventually scored a meeting with Severok, the interim prosecutor, on April 6, 2016, one week after Shokin's firing. Beretta, Traumatano, and Painter attended the meeting directly in Kiev. Severok, remember, who's Severok? He's the new prosecutor, he's interim. Eventually the case would be kicked off to the NABU, which we'll get to in a while. But the interim prosecutor here, Severuk, kept a memo of what this meeting was. So you have the defense attorneys for Hunter Biden's company, Burisma. A week after Joe Biden forces this other prosecutor to be fired, they go over and meet with the interim prosecutor. Now, what are they going to say? That's what's crucially important. Severuk memorialized the meeting in a government memo that the general prosecutor's office provided me stating that the three Americans offered an apology for the false narrative that had been provided by U.S. officials about Shokin being corrupt and inept. Quote from Severuk, the interim prosecutor, they realized that the information disseminated in the U.S. was incorrect, and they would facilitate my visit to the U.S. for the purpose of delivering the true information to the State Department management. The memo also quoted the Americans as saying they knew Shokin pursued an aggressive corruption investigation against Burisma's owner, only to be thwarted by British allies. These individuals noted that they'd been aware of the Prosecutor General's Office of Ukraine had implemented all required steps for prosecution, and that it was the release by the British court due to underperformance by British law enforcement agencies. The memo provides a vastly different portrayal of Shokin than Biden. And its contents are partially backed by subsequent emails from Blue Star and Beretta that confirm the offer to bring Ukrainian authorities to meet the Obama administration in Washington. So we have the actual prosecutor saying, I was fired because I refused to bury the investigation into Joe Biden's son. Jake Tapper and company, all the left, all the media, they say, that doesn't matter, we can't listen to Shokin. He's a bad prosecutor. Listen to this other prosecutor. Well, second, the prosecutor they suggest Lutsenko doesn't say what he thinks they said, as I showed before. But now we have a third prosecutor who's not Shokin. He's saying, look, immediately after this prosecutor was fired, one week after that, these people that are working as the defense attorneys for Burisma, for Hunter Biden's company, come to me and they say, we're sorry. We know that U.S. officials, i.e. Joe Biden, were spreading disinformation when they said that Shokin was corrupt. We would like to work with you and facilitate you meeting with the Obama State Department to kind of resolve the case. That is devastating. What incentive would people connected to Hunter Biden and having his best interest have be to throw him under the bus and lie about that? So if the argument is we can't touch trust Shokin because he's biased, well, the people that would be biased to have the incentive to be biased for Biden are admitting that Biden was wrong. They admit that they know Shokin wasn't corrupt and he was actively pursuing this investigation. Now, is that definitive proof? Does that prove guilt of Biden or of Hunter Biden? No, but that's certainly when their own defense attorneys for that company are saying, we think the reason that was given for firing that prosecutor is a lie. That's certainly reason for an investigation. Yet you saw how smug and sanctimonious Jake Tapper was at the mere suggestion. So let's move on here. 
Did, did tell you Ukraine to fire the prosecutor? He, I think he did. He did. No, but the guy was talking about. The guy was not prosecuting anything. And that was a problem. problem. The, the government of the United States and, and the West. Joe Biden told him to fire the prosecutor. You're not saying the facts. No, here are the facts. Did Joe, did Joe Biden tell him to fire the prosecutor? Because he yes. wasn't going after corruption. He wasn't going after corruption. Did that, did that, do you understand did what I'm saying? saying? Now, who's giving facts here? Jim Jordan's going exactly through. We know that. Hunter Biden's son was not qualified for this position, was getting $50,000 a year. We know that that company was under investigation. We know that Joe Biden offered a quid pro quo using a billion of U.S. tax dollars to force that prosecutor to be fired. Those are all facts. What Jake Tapper is saying is, no, the fact is this guy was not pursuing corruption investigation. That's not a fact. That's hearsay from people that he happens to agree with. By the way, as I went through, people that are all connected to George Soros, all connected to Globus, and were all big allies of the Obama administration. I've gone through specific people, the specific prosecutor, the people that were actually defense attorneys for Burisma that show what Jake Tapper is saying is untrue. This is public evidence by the time Tapper does this interview, yet they're unwilling to look at it. This evidence that I just read you about Shokin's statement and the statement of Hunter Biden's company's defense attorneys, it's been out for four days now, and not one person has touched it. The only group that sought to do anything with this was the Daily Beast, and all they said, they completely ignore the evidence and just say John Solomon, the reporter, is a bad dude. But it's not just him reporting from anonymous sources, he actually provides the memos. So who's getting facts here? And this is Jake Tapper fact-checking Jim Jordan. He's not saying anything. Again, put the shoe on the other foot. Is this what he said about James Comey when people were saying we need a Mueller investigation? Was Jake Tapper yelling at people and saying, you're not reporting facts. The fact is, the Republicans and the Democrats and Rod Rosenstein wanted Comey fired. That's the facts. No, of course not. He said, oh, this could have been personally beneficial to Trump, so it warrants an investigation. I wonder why the double standard. <laughs> That no, he wasn't going after that prosecutor. Was that prosecutor looking in, into Burisma, the company that had hired Joe Biden's son for fifty? According to the Ukrainians, yes. that investigation was dormant and at the time. Most important. That That's not true. I just read you a clearing to the Ukrainians, including Severin, and I'll also provide more here later as he goes further because he talks about anti-corruption people inside the Ukrainian government wanting this guy fired as well. Even they admit that the the investigation was ongoing. That well, investigation Joe, was dormant at the time. Did Joe Biden's son get paid $50,000 a month in a field in an industry that he had no experience in? Those are three key If facts. you want to push a law saying that the children of presidents and vice presidents should not be doing international business deals, I'm all for it. But you're setting a standard that is not being met right now. I'm just, I'm and that's a straw man that he's offering there because that's not what anyone has a problem with. What they have a problem with is possibly working with corrupt individuals that are engaged in money laundering and things of that nature. And then having a problem with an investigation being stopped by that person's dad who happens to be an executive official and using a billion dollars of tax dollars to stop the investigation. That's what people have a problem with. No one cares if Joe Biden's son gets a job, you know, with, uh, you know, FIFA or something on the board of directors of FIFA just making millions of dollars to watch soccer games. No one cares. If there's allegations of corruption and money laundering and things like that, then it becomes a problem. I'm just tell you what happened. Joe Biden no, you're called not. up and said, fire this prosecutor or you're not getting it. No, aid. you're suggesting that Biden called for the prosecutor should be fired to protect and his president, son. And president. That's not what happened. And president. Okay, but that's Jake Tapper's opinion. Again, we have statements from people alleging that's exactly what happened. So doesn't that warrant an investigation? And second, this is a double standard by Tapper. Because what he says, he acts as if this is definitive proof. But when it comes to Trump and talking to the Ukrainians to investigate election interference in the 2016 election, Tapper then goes the opposite direction and goes, ah, this proves that Trump was doing this for his benefit in the 2020 election. So you don't get to say, when we're looking at the people I don't like, I assume their motives are impure, but when we're looking at the people I like, we'll assume their motives are pure. That's not how things work. You don't do that, especially if you're a real journalist. You actually investigate and don't leave your bias, just allow people's opinions and their words to influence that as the exact truth. You have to investigate and see if that's the case. You don't just say, everybody said this guy was corrupt, so he must have been corrupt. Give me the evidence, show me. Did you talk to people on both sides of the issue? Is a good journalist only get one side of the story? Yet that's exactly what Tapper's doing. And he's saying it as if it's settled. The media does this all the time. They'll just say, this is a conspiracy theory. Therefore, this is what they did with the Russia collusion hoax. They made fun of all the people like me that was like, this is garbage. No, no, no. Trump colluded with the Russians. Trust us. Mueller will show you. Mueller's going to show you. And then they were wrong.
And then Trump says, oh, can you help me figure out what happened in the 2016 election? After all, you know, Congress, Democrats just put our country through three years of this. Congress, when there was a false accusation and there was no evidence of any type of coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia to influence that election. Here's the, the thing. The president brings that up. And, and, and Here's somehow the thing. That's, he can't do that. I want, you to, take, can do what I want you to take a listen to Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, when he was governor, running for vice president, saying that it is a principle of the United States that foreign governments are not supposed to get involved in American elections. Let's roll that tape. Now, you all need to know out there, this is, this is basic stuff. Foreign donors, and certainly foreign governments, cannot participate in the American political process. That once was a principle of the United States, but now, no, it's not, because the president is calling for Ukraine to investigate his rivals. Okay, first, we know that Obama did the exact same thing. We know that he worked with officials in the UK and Australia. They used dirt that was unverified from Kremlin officials. They worked with people in the Ukraine. All of this. And Jake Tapper never said word one. Now, I know what you're saying, Rob, but you're just doing what Jake Tapper said. You're not proving it. Well, we know for a fact that they worked. We admitted they worked with Downer. We admitted that they worked with people in the Five Eyes, such as the UK. We know that they used the Kremlin dirt. We've seen all the proof of that. Now, let's talk about the Ukraine. I want you to look at the date of this article. This is from the Financial Times, and it's in August 28th, 2016. Let me just read this a little to you. The Financial Times, this is a mainstream media outlet in the United States. For years, Sergei Leshenko, a top Ukrainian anti-corruption campaigner, remember Jake Tapper was talking about anti-corruption people inside the Ukraine? Yes, these are the type of people he's talking about. Worked to expose the kleptocracy under former President Yukonovich. Now he's focusing on a new perceived pro-Russian threat to the Ukraine, U.S. candidate Donald Trump. The prospect of Mr. Trump, who has, who has praised Ukraine's archenemy Putin, becoming the leader of the country's biggest ally, has spurred not just Mr. Lyshenko, but Kiev's wider political leadership to do something they would never have attempted before. Intervene, however indirectly, in the U.S. election. Let me read that again. Intervene in the U.S. election. Lyshenko and bigger political allies in the country of the Ukraine. That is devastating. For three years, we've said that we have to investigate Trump. No stone unturned because he may have accepted or there may have been foreign interference to benefit him in the 2016 election. All of this was burst off rumor and innuendo. We had the entire Mueller fiasco. It turned out that Trump didn't do anything illegal with Russia, nor did anyone in his campaign. Here we have before the election in August of 2016, months leading up to the election, Ukrainians publicly admitting on mainstream media in the United States, we are actively intervening and interfering in the election because we want Hillary Clinton to win and we hate Donald Trump. Mr. Lyshenko and the Ukraine's Anti-Corruption Bureau published a secret ledger this month that authorities claim show millions of dollars of off-the-book cash payments to Manafort, Trump's campaign manager. Mr. Manafort vigorously denies wrongdoing, resigned from his campaign role, but Mr. Lyshenko and other political actors in Kiev say they will continue their efforts to prevent a candidate who recently suggested Russia might keep Crimea from reaching the summit of American political power. We are admitting that we did interfere, and we're going to continue to interfere to make sure Trump doesn't win. Quote from Mr. Lyshenko, A Trump presidency would change the pro-Ukrainian agenda in American foreign policy, Mr. Lyshenko said. For me, it was important to show not only corruption, but that he is a pro-Russian candidate who could break the geopolitical balance in the world. In other words, they don't like his politics and the fact that he's seeking to have better relationships with Russia. We had a country interfere in our election to help a candidate because they didn't like his policies. Now, you might say, ah, oh, but the, yeah, even so, there's no proof that that was effective. If the Republican candidate loses in November, some observers suggest Kiev's actions may have played a small role. Ukraine's anti-corrupt activists have probably saved the Western world, Anton Chikasov said, a Western-based academic specialist in Russia and Ukraine, tweeted after Manafort resigned. That is devastating. So the anti-corruption people that he's citing, that's proof that Shokin was corrupt, are themselves admitting before the election, during the election of 2016, yes, we're actively interfering in the election to benefit Hillary Clinton. The same thing that Jake Tapper and all the Democrats were foaming at the mouth for three years saying, no stone unturned to investigate if it was Russia interfering to help Trump. Have no problem with the public admission that that's exactly what the Ukraine was doing to help Hillary Clinton. Now, Jake Tapper has the nerve to put this clip out that says, Mike Pence said that we don't accept foreign interference, but duh! Well, where was Tapper when this information came out about the Ukraine? Where was Tapper when three Democratic senators, Leahy, Menendez, and Durbin, sent a letter to the Ukraine that basically did the exact same thing they're accusing Trump of doing? 
and said, hey, your economy's looking pretty good now. We've supported that, but we've heard some troubling news that possibly you're going to stop giving evidence about Trump being guilty to Mueller. We strongly urge you to overcome this. That's the exact same thing that they've accused Trump of doing. Where was Tamper then saying, these his, his network, CNN, reported on that in May of 2018. The report wasn't, oh, this is devastating. This is as seeking foreign influence into investigations into political opponents. No, it was the exact opposite. Their report was, this is good. Where was CNN's Jake Tamper then? Where was he when Obama was seeking help to get dirt on Trump from foreign apps? He said it was important to investigate crimes. So he acts so sanctimonious here, and you can tell that he's a liar and he's corrupt. He's a hypocrite. He knows this information, and you know how I know he knows? Because I'm some fat guy who works 70 hours a week in a field that has nothing to do with politics or media, and I know. So if I have access to this information, Jake Tapper certainly does. Jake, you're missing the fundamental point here. I'm not missing Democrats, anything. Democrats, if you want to impede, if, if, if this is their argument, Rudy Giuliani talked to your Ukrainian, Rudy Giuliani, the private lawyer of the president, so we're going to impeach this president. I'm not Give saying whether... Break. I'm not, I think the American people are going, really? I'm not taking in light a position of, in light of how the, the In light of what this president has been able to do leading our country, in light of the economic growth, what he's done with our Supreme Court, just what he's done with, with uh, the embassy in Jerusalem, a host of things, you really think the American people are like, wait a minute, so Rudy Giuliani, the president's private lawyer, had a conversation I with I think Ukrainian. that you came here impeach? and leveled a bunch of accusations break. and allegations about, I level, about, I about, about Hunter facts. Biden. I didn't level, I just said the facts. He did it he pay 50000 a month? He was paid by a foreign company. Yeah, he was paid by Burisma. But Joe Biden was trying to get a, a, a prosecutor who was not pursuing corruption fired. And it was it's supported. It's amazing the it was gymnastics you guys will go through to defend what. Do you really Sir, it's think not the vice gymnastics, pres, the vice it's pres, facts. The vice president and I would think somebody States. who's been accused of things in the last year or two would be more sensitive about throwing out wild allegations against people. I'm not throwing out wild I'm throwing out the facts. You're, you're, uh, the the, what, the what? prosecutor was not pursuing corruption. That's why the entire West wanted him fired, including anti-corruption activists in Ukraine. Okay, now he makes this claim. Notice, he doesn't give any evidence of corruption at all of Shokin, the guy that Biden got fired. Not once. He just keeps saying, other people said he was corrupt. Other people said he was corrupt. And he's saying, he says it's definitively a fact that Biden wanted him fired for being corrupt. He doesn't know that. That would be no different than a Trump supporter saying it is definitively a fact that Trump wanting Biden investigated had nothing to do with Trump winning in 2020. He just wants corruption investigated. Jake Tapper would say, I'm sorry, there warrants an investigation. That's why he's supporting the impeachment investigation. That's why he's saying it's so devastating that he asked Ukraine about it. Because he is automatically jumping to the conclusion that this was for Trump's personal benefit. Yet he does the exact opposite with Biden. Now, notice, he talks about anti-corruption activists within Ukraine are even saying this. I've already went through the rest of the world, the, the International Monetary Fund, and all these Obama allies thought it was okay. But again, one, they're all allies of Obama. Second, that seems to belie the fact that after the case was buried after this prosecutor was fired, none of those Western allies, the IMF, none of them spoke up and were outraged by that. So it seems like they were less outraged about this supposed corrupt guy Zolchevsky being properly investigated. They were more outraged that they just wanted this prosecutor gone. Now, what was it? If they're okay with the corruption allowing to continue and the guy that's accused of being corrupt of never being prosecuted, then what was it? What was the only difference? Oh, well, maybe they didn't want a proper investigation. He talks about the anti-corruption activists. So here's an article, and this is going to be from the Anti-Corruption Action Center, one of the groups that he's talking about. Now, this group, we'll later find out, was actually had ties to George Soros and the Obama administration. But first, I want to show this article that they're writing that explains this. This is going to explain that un a counter to what Jake Tapper and a bunch of people on the left are saying, the investigations into Burisma were not shut down before this prosecutor was fired. They were ongoing, some still today. Now, keep in mind, as I read through this, these people are have a bias, and they were on the side of Obama. So they're spinning this as Shokin was a bad dude. But they're also admitting that Zolchevsky, the guy that was in charge of Barissa, is a bad dude. This lady, by the way, is one that was cited in the big Intercept article that was being spread around to show that this is just all wild conspiracy theory. Biden did nothing wrong. So let's see what it says. The irony is that actually it was the prosecutor general's office, that would be Shokin, who repeatedly covered Zolchevsky up from the criminal prosecution. 
Moreover, the only ongoing investigations into Zolchevsky's company are conducted by the NABU. In total, there were four criminal proceedings related to Burisma and Zolchevsky's time in office, two of which were watered down by the Prosecutor General's office, and two are still being investigated by the NABU. So even she admits there were four investigations, even if you take the people defending Biden's word, who have an incentive, who, and I'll get to in a second why, to defend the Obama administration, even they admit the investigation was ongoing. It got kicked to a new agency. Now, who is the Anti-Corruption Action Center? They're also known as Ant-AC. Lutsenko, this is the prosecutor that Tapper was like, oh, we gotta listen to, right? Lutsenko told me he was stunned when the ambassador gave me a list of people whom we should not prosecute. The list included a founder of the Ant-AC, that woman who I just referenced in the previous article, and two members of parliament who vocally supported the group's anti-corruption reform agenda. It turns out the group the Ukrainian law enforcement was probing was co-funded by the Obama administration and liberal mega-donor George Soros. And it was collaborating with the FBI agents, then-Trump campaign manager Paul Biz Manafort's business activities with pro-Russian figures in the Ukraine. In other words, this group was one of the ones with Lashenko when they said anti-corruption groups in side the Ukraine were actively working to intervene in the 2016 election. This was one of those groups. These are the people that Jake Tapper said, oh, we have to listen to them. Now we have evidence that the Obama, they're feeding evidence against Obama's opponent, or his against his side's opponent, his party's opponent. They're illegally interfering and feeding that information to the Obama administration. And the Obama administration, in turn, is telling Ukraine prosecutors, you can't look into these people for criminal prosecution. The implied message to Ukraine's prosecutors was clear. Don't target the anti-AC in the middle of an American presidential election in which Soros was backing Hillary Clinton to succeed another Soros favorite, Barack Obama. Now, do you see the corruption here? Again, if you're favorable to the Democrats and Obama and Biden and you hate Trump, you'll say, but this isn't definitive proof. I agree, but it's more than enough reason for an investigation. Jake Tapper not citing any evidence of corruption and citing anti-corruption groups in the Ukraine that we know, one, fully admitted to interfering in the 2016 election because they hated Trump and wanted Hillary to win. And two, were actually being criminally investigated by prosecutors in the Ukraine, but had the prosecutions dropped because Obama's administration forced it. That's the, un that's the objective group that we have to listen to? Why isn't Jake Tapper giving the facts? He just gives this appeal to authority. Well, it says anti-corruption in the name, so we have to trust them. He doesn't bother to say, well, what, what are the specific allegations of corruption of this prosecutor Shokin that was fired? He doesn't mention any of that. Now, remember, I showed you that when this investigation left, according to this very anti-corruption group and others, where did the investigation go? It went to the NABU, which is another anti-corruption agency that was said to be working with Lashenko, to influence the 2016 election. Another Solomon argue. Most of the general prosecutor's investigative work on Burisma focused on three separate cases, and most stopped abruptly once Shokin was fired. The most prominent of the Burisma cases was transferred to a Ukrainian agency, closely aligned with the U.S. Embassy in Camp, in other words, closely aligned with the Obama administration, known as the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine. Now, where have you heard that? Remember, this from the Anti-Corruption Action Center, she said two of the cases were investigated by the NABU. Okay, that's Solomon's backed up by these people. The NABU closed that case. And a second case involving alleged improper money transfers in London was struck when Ukrainian officials failed to file the necessary documents by the required deadline. Now, isn't that, isn't that coincidental? Joe Biden has a prosecutor. This guy was corrupt. Biden wanted this prosecutor fired because he wasn't looking in to Burisma and his son's company hard enough. That's what they'll have you believe. And then it ends up going to this agency that has ties to Biden and Obama. And they bury it when it finally gets there. So what else has the NABU done? The fresh statement comes several months after a Ukrainian court ruled that the country's National Anti-Corruption Bureau, the NABU, the one that, after Biden got the prosecutor fired, they're the ones who are now looking into his son's company, the country's NABU closely aligned with the U.S. Embassy in Kiev and parliamentarian named Sergei Lyshenko, 
wrongly interfered in the 2016 American election by releasing documents related to Manafort. We know they were. Remember this article? From August of 2016, where Leshenko, the very guy working with the NADU that the Ukrainian courts are investigating, admits, yes, we're actively interfering in the election. The acknowledgement by Kiev's embassy plus newly released testimony suggests Ukrainian efforts to influence the U.S. election had some intersections in Washington as well. Nellie Orr, wife of senior U.S. Justice Department official Bruce Orr, acknowledged in congressional testimony, while working for the Clinton-hired research firm Fusion GPS, she researched Trump and Manafort's ties in Russia and learned that Lushenko, the Ukrainian lawmaker, was providing dirt to Fusion. Lushenko and the NABU was working with Fusion GPS to dig up dirt on Donald Trump, working with Hillary Clinton. That's the group that Jake Tapper says, well, we just have to take their word. Joe Biden got the investigation kicked from a prosecutor. Again, maybe we could, I can even concede that Shokin was corrupt. I see no proof of it. I just see her allegations. But let's say that that's true for argument's sake. Joe Biden didn't really know, though. If you're Joe Biden, would you rather have some prosecutor that maybe is corrupt, maybe not, investigating your son? Or would you rather have it be the agency that's at the time working with the Democrats to get dirt on Trump and interfering in the 2016 election? A group that you've pushed over and over again to make prosecutorial decisions. Next. In another instance, he said Ukrainian authorities gathered evidence that money paid to an American Democrat allegedly was hidden by Ukraine's National Anti-Corruption Bureau, the NABU, during the 2016 election under pressure from U.S. officials. In the course of this investigation, we found that there was a situation during which influence was exerted on the NABU so that the name of the American would not be mentioned. Now, isn't this getting all a little coincidental? Yet despite this, all I'm saying, again, doesn't this want an investigation? Jake Tapper, who's supposed to be a credible journalist, is there telling you, we don't need any proof of corruption. We're just going to take these groups' word on it. He doesn't care that Joe Biden forced the prosecutor that was looking into his son to be fired. He doesn't care that even his son's company's own defense attorneys show that Biden lied about that guy being corrupt. He doesn't care that that prosecutor's father and affidavit that he wasn't corrupt, that he was fired because Biden wanted the investigation buried. He, doesn't, he cites as proof without any fact these organizations that were all connected to Obama that themselves were engaged in interfering in the 2016 election for Hillary Clinton. The very crime he and the rest of his cohorts for three years have told us is the most serious thing in the world and that we need to investigate. And this is the left's example of owning the argument. Fact-checking Jim Jordan. Absolutely ridiculous. The proof's all there. I'll link all these articles. The Republicans need to hire someone like me, or they need to have Mark Levin. Notice they never have serious debates. And look, don't get me wrong, I really like Jim Jordan. But he is also, he has other things on his plate. And he doesn't have the time or the resources to look at this and come up with a developed argument as I am. And sometimes it's tough under pressure, you know, to be able to come up with the exact right argument. So I feel he could have done better. I challenge anyone from the mainstream media, anyone even not that wants to defend these left-wing positions, to have a debate with me on this. I'll be polite. I'm not going to be a jerk. And I would devastate them. because Not because I'm a genius, but because the facts are on my side. Let's finish this up. I don't understand what you don't get about that. I, I get that. I'm just talking about this specific case that there's been reporting on. And the facts of that specific case are what he was paid per month, $50,000. Like I said, that's more than some of the folks I get the privilege of representing in the 4th District of Ohio get paid in a year. He's getting that $50,000 a month. The vice president's son, he got hired for what? The president's daughter right now is having all sorts of copyrights uh, granted in foreign countries. That doesn't alarm you. The president's sons are doing all sorts of come business on. all over the world. That doesn't yeah, alarm come you. On. What's the, come on? The, the either, there's a principle, the, either there's a principle the that, people should not, that people should not benefit the from previous, their connections the previous, or there isn't. The previous administration. All right, I already went through this. Uh, no one's saying that you people related to the president or vice president can't be engaged in business. People are saying when you have the president or the vice president withholding a billion dollars, extorting a country to fire a prosecutor, looking into the alleged corruption of your sibling's business or your son or your child's business, that's what's corrupt. And it's funny to hear Jake Tapper talk about principle. 
Either there's a principle that it's okay for foreign interference to affect the election, or there's not. He spent three years breathing, foaming at the mouth about Russia possibly having foreign interference to help Trump. We know that there is public acknowledgement that Ukrainian officials were actively, even during the election, were talking to the mainstream media saying, yes, we're interfering in the 2016 election. And Jake Tapper didn't breathe a word about it. So who's principled here? He has the nerve to talk about principles. Not only does he not talk about it, but he says to investigate it's a crime and Trump deserves impeachment. for it. Not only that, he then cites the very people that admitted to interfering in the election as reasons that Biden must be telling the truth. It's unreal. FBI went after this president on July 31st. They did a they crappy job then because they, they didn't even a, acknowledge there was an no, investigation they went after him. until after the election. They spied on two Americans associated with President Trump's campaign. They put Peter Strzok in charge of that if campaign. They were, the, guy who, the guy who said Trump should lose okay. $100 million to zero. They allowed, they allowed if, Jim Comey leaked documents to get a special sir, counsel. They used the dossier to go get a warrant. Okay, to spy now on we're campaign. back to the dossier. No, I'm just Strzok. saying that's what happened to President Trump. If, and then in, and now, now that none of that worked. None of that. I understand you want to change the subject, but the president no, was pushing the president of Ukraine to investigate a political rival. I cannot believe that that is OK with you. I yeah. And once more, CNN has defended three Democratic senators that pushed the government of the Ukraine, the very same government, to investigate their opponent, Donald Trump. We know that. We know that Barack Obama pushed other countries to leave evidence in their investigation of Donald Trump. So Jake Tapper getting on his high horse saying, I can't believe this is okay with you. He didn't say word one about that, even though it's been public evidence for over three years. So it just goes to show, and again, I want to stress that Jake Tapper here, he's not just Jake Tapper, an individual coming up with his thoughts. This is the argument that's being presented by all of the left. The Adam Schiff's, the Nancy Pelosi's, the Chuck Schumer's, the New York Times, the Rachel Maddow's, the Chris Hayes, the Anderson Cooper's, you know, they're all pushing this. I think that I've done a great job of thoroughly debunking all this. And let me just say in conclusion, the argument isn't that we have to prove that Joe Biden or Hunter Biden broke the law. All we have to do is prove that there reasonable people would say there should be an investigation of this. I would say like to stand by the standard that any time that you have an official in the United States threatening a country with a large sum of U.S. tax dollars to get the prosecutor that is looking into their family fired, regardless of the circumstances around that, it warrants an investigation. The fact that people like Jake Tapper that are supposedly credible journalists and all these Democrats that are supposedly interested in stopping foreign interference and stopping uh, all sorts of corruption efforts are not only saying there's nothing there, you're a conspiracy theorist if you believe this, but they're actually saying if government officials pursue investigations into this, they ought to be charged with a crime and impeached. That is devastating. Hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'll be putting more material out as time goes on. Please follow me on BitChute and Twitter as well. And I'd really appreciate it if you could share my material with other people. I think that it's important to take long dives into things like this because too often all sides want to just say, oh, here's my article, oh, here's my article, and they don't really look into the details of what that article actually proves. Because the mainstream left controls all of our cultural institutions of power, such as academia, the mainstream media, the entertainment industry, and Silicon Valley, they control the narrative and they allow people, average people, they only hear that side of the story. So the more you could get independent people like me or other independent people that are actually doing a deep dive and looking at the real evidence, the better chance we have of the real people not being under the thumb of these establishment leftists. So I really appreciate if you'd share my material. I think I would do a lot of good. So thank you so much for listening and have a good one.